Hey Rebecca, I saw your video about South Park and I wanted to, it got me thinking, your video got me thinking and, and that made me want to share what I was thinking because I, I enjoyed hearing your thoughts. I enjoyed watching you get mad about this because, you know, I like your passion. I like when people show their passion for things and if that is criticism of a piece of entertainment that's that's great I mean it's it's mass market it's pop culture as you said and some South, South Park is reaching a lot of people there's a lot of people in the world that can watch it a lot of Americans I don't know what it what its viewership is outside of the United States <clears throat> But, I mean, it is true that, you know, the, the show is completely disrespectful about its representation of pretty much all minorities. <laughs> um, you know, black people, Jews, there's, I remember this one episode of where they were making fun of the Chinese, Chinese people, transsexuals, Canadians, you know rednecks, school teachers, uh, did I say Jews already? I think I did, you know, Kyle's mom, big fat bitch. But, <clears throat> I, I mean, I, I, I have to admit that I've watched South Park and I've, there have been plenty of times when I thought it was funny. Because sometimes I think that the writing is really clever and they've done some really excellent commentary on things in the world like um, like when when there was this George W. Bush and Al Gore election thing and I had to do all the recounts pretty much within one week these guys at South Park had created a show written and produced an entire show that was directly about all the ridiculousness of all the recounts and the speed at which they were able to create this production was made my head spin. So, um, I guess I feel like, even though I, I also find the representation of, of Mrs. Garrison, the transsexual school teacher in South Park offensive, I also kind of have to give it some credit, um, for, for kind of being brave enough for the creators to be brave enough to say nothing is sacred. We're going to make fun of everything and everyone. And I think that's how the show comes off, that it it doesn't pull its punches for anybody. So everyone gets equal abuse in in the world of South Park, Colorado. Um, but kind of the bigger the bigger part of this is um, just the general the general problem of representation of transsexuals in the media um, and I've kind of said this before that when I was little I I knew that it was possible to be a transsexual you know I saw Jerry Springer and that shit fucked me up I would see these home wrecking trannies that were stealing men and, you know, lying to their boyfriends, saying they were women, but actually they were men. Um, and uh, when I was little, I was kind of obsessed with consuming media and, and stories and anything that involved a man becoming a woman. So I watched these Jerry Springer episodes, and I think that it really distorted my perspective of what is a transsexual. And I think that the same thing can be said for what this episode of South Park does. I'll, I, 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 I haven't watched South Park for a long time. In fact, I think the last episode I watched was about yeah, two and a half years ago when I started my transition. I found out that... Mr. Garrison was a transsexual, uh, or became a woman, and I had to watch the episode to see what it was all about. But I remember being really disappointed in it, and I don't remember all of the details that went into the show, that, that one show. 
But I do seem to remember that Mr. Garrison was just depressed, and then disappeared one day and came back exactly the same, except with a V between his, her legs. Her legs. V between her legs instead of a little bulge. And, uh, didn't bother to change her voice, didn't bother to change her hair, you know, I guess got a boob job or something. And it really... I found it incredibly unsatisfying because it's just like, yeah, a person can be upset about something and then disappear and come back after a short while and suddenly you're a woman. And it's true that that's not the way it happens. Um, and I think that it does a really unfair job of representing people that actually go through this transition. But that's not what the show is trying to do. The show is trying to be the lowest common denominator of entertainment. You know, the show is is designed to make all the closed-minded people in the United States laugh. So that they'll watch the show, so that they'll have ratings that they can sell to advertisers, so they can make money. That's what it's all about they have no social responsibility to accurately depict the struggles that all sorts of different classes of people go through. And even though it's annoying, I also don't think that it's appropriate that every single thing in the world should try to accurately, respectfully represent all types of people. I think that diversity is good, and I think that humor is good, and I think that, uh, you know, I have to be able to laugh at myself about this transition sometimes because it's completely and utterly ridiculous if you think about it. <laughs> it's just like, it's been so hard that if I can't laugh about it, then I haven't really matured. Um, but I think the real problem with, with, you know, this free, the free country of America, is that people come to trust the television as the truth, or as the way the world is. And I think that there's a lot of closed-minded and ignorant people that will believe that because they've never tried to learn about these things on their own. And so what happens is people watch this thing, they think it's funny, they think it's the truth, they think, it, people, you know, people like us become a caricature. And then it's like, oh, well, you're just like that, you know, weird-ass transsexual that I saw on television, so yuck, what are you? And I actually, you know, what this person said about becoming a dolphin it kind of resonated with me because that was one of the things that, that my father kind of said at one point where I told him, you know, I feel so empowered by my transition. I feel like I'm in control of my life. I feel like I have built my own reality. It's, I've constructed it. I built this world just for me. And that everybody has this power. And my father came and said, no, come, that's not true. You know, what about... What about, I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but it, for some reason it's, it was a lot similar to, what if I wanted to be a dolphin? Then, yeah, I mean, if you're serious about something like that, then anyone that's serious about that kind of transition is going to have to understand that there's limitations to themselves and their bodies, and that there are certain things that they can augment to make themselves more like a dolphin and find out, really decide what are the things about being a dolphin that they find so fascinating and so desirable. And can they do those things? You know, I'm sure it's possible to get a blowhole inserted on your back or something. It would be probably disgusting and it might not be functional, uh, but it's probably possible. And I, I support you in your protest of South Park. And I support you in your protest of any other media that you find offensive in its depiction of transsexuals. 
um, and I support you in in any endeavors that you undertake to help people understand that it's not so simple and it's not something to be dismissed it is an incredibly beautiful thing to be transgender it is incredibly difficult and I think people like you and me understand ourselves so much better than somebody that would make a joke like that I want to be a dolphin so. that's all keep up your great videos and I'll talk to you soon and uh, see you next time